Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? It is Winning Cures Everything, and this is the College Football Week 5 Gambling Show. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Whoo! It takes a lot to get excited when it's about midnight. Well, a little... Maybe a little after midnight, yeah, a little after midnight. Uh, on a Tuesday evening after we have been going through trying to figure out how we're going to get out of this slump, etc. Uh, it's been a rough few weeks. We had a good week three, a not very good week four, but now we're into week five. We don't look back. We only look forward. We jam that sweet music. We pull ourselves some winners. I'm feeling good. Feeling all right? I love it. You can find out more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Of course, over there in the gambling picks section, you can figure out every single bet that we have made since we started this podcast four seasons ago. I mean, that includes a ton of stuff. Now, the the spreadsheets back then were not nearly as nice as they are now. No, sir. It it was not uh, super organized, and that's okay. But you, you can, can still, still see it. Yeah, you can see it, and that's good. So, uh, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have taken a lot of my money in the last four weeks, and that's okay. I keep going down there and handing it over, and I don't expect to get it back because, well, that would just be rude. They didn't put no. a gun to my head. No, they sure didn't. I gave it over willingly, and that's all right. But I'm going to get some of it back this weekend. I'm feeling good. Like, I feel like my numbers are finally, finally kicking in. This is about the time. Like, week four, week five is when it's supposed to, like, click. And I'm, I'm going to stop not paying attention to my numbers, right? Because I, I just, I've been going on feeling, yep. and that's a bad way to bet sometimes. That's how I do it. And you've been pretty successful. And with that's it. a bad way to bet. <laughs> we we both been losing. <laughs> it's not good. Not good. All right. Uh, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They, of course, sponsor our giveaways. Uh, we have not mailed out the Tunica prize packs yet. That will be mailed out uh, actually first thing in the morning. I've already got them set up. I just have to mail them. Um, but, yeah, we will we will be mailing that stuff out. More stuff will be coming to you. Yes. We we are. It, it, it didn't we're set trying. up. It didn't set up the way that we wanted it to, to right. start the season. Nothing, nothing has we, worked the way we wanted it, and that is. But it will. We swear to you. It sure. will. It is It is going to happen. You're going to get it. And we yeah. do appreciate you joining. We appreciate you playing. And, and this it week, a lot. This week will be a, a surprise thing because I'm not going to know exactly what the prize will be until oh, like Thursday. We just don't know. It's not well, I, like we're like not teasing it. No, it's... We're I, in the dark. Yeah, I, I have... There's stuff coming on Thursday, but I don't know what it is yet. Awesome. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a strange setup, but that's okay. That's good. Uh, but you can go over. Inter- it's like waiting on Christmas. Yeah, you you're gonna get something. Like I mean, whether whether we got to drop in like a fifty dollar gift card or something like that. Rules. Like well, well maybe not fifty bucks. Who's maybe for that. It's, I don't know. We'd have come to come out, out of money. Of, we'd have to come out of pocket here. Uh, I don't know, but it, we, we'll come up with something. We'll give y'all something. My emergency twenty is. So and it, it will be something nice. So of course, go over, enter your picks for the gambling picks contest. Uh, the football pick em contest, whatever it is, over on the website. Uh, go check that out. You're picking 10 games against the spread. All you got to do is enter in an email. It takes you about two minutes to fill out the form. It is pretty, pretty nice. Last week, I went 4-4. Four and four. Lost $45.45. The big is tough. It's a, it's a killer. It's a killer. Uh, you went 1-4. and four. Uh, Yeah, I didn't do so well. You hit, uh, you hit $100 bet. I hit a, I hit a big one. Yeah. Um, lost all the rest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lost $175. Overall, I am 14 and 19, and I have lost $399.45. I am down 7.99 units. Chris is 10 and 12, lost $206.82. So you are. I was doing really, I was doing fair till last week. Yes. Last week. Just about killed you. Yes. Um, but even still, you've still only lost half of what I have. 
That's okay. That's going to change this week, though. That's all right. I'm twice the man you. Caleb E. I'm not going to respond to that. It's uh, <laughs> Ca- <laughs> in all the worst ways. Caleb E. Hey, is that our Caleb? That's our Caleb. Hey, yo, no way. Won the contest last week. He went eight and two, and he we're won not, the tiebreaker. We're not shipping his thing. He's got to come get it. You heard it from the horse's mouth. He lives in Bangladesh. Yeah, he does. <laughs> What's the shipping cost on that? <laughs> About forty bucks. Take it to your mama's house. Yeah, absolutely. So he's uh, he's I one of our buddies. I bet it's, it's more than forty dollars. Uh, yeah, I guess for what we're for what we'd be sending, yeah. yeah. Oh man, I'm, I'm gonna bet it's more than forty dollars. It's, it's gonna be a lot. You you gonna have to talk to your buddy about that. I'll drop it. Drop it off at your mom's. House. There you go. All right. Game number one. I'm gonna start us off. Come on. I've got eight picks this time. No two, money line three, parlay this go round. I'm hopping off the money line bandwagon. I went one and two in those picks. Uh, it's it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. To be fair, for those of you that are watching, it was in. Um, not bad taste. I won't say that. I will say that a parlay is not a smart bet. So we should not be advertising it, a parlay. But it's, it's it, why I always offer if you want to make those bets, don't go to tune, just make it with me. It's a yeah. friendly wager. I will gladly take whatever action now, you would like to do on these parlays. Now, sometimes you will hit a parlay and sure. it will make you feel great, right? I mean, I hit a four teamer on totals in week one. Like, not, not on our show, but just in oh, my yeah. personal stuff. We're degenerate. We that, gamble way more than this. That paid out. Really nice. Really nice. That's right. Um, I'll take that action. Anytime and it, you and like it makes offer. you, if you hit it in week one, you're like, man, I'm going to do this every week. Every, I, like, I, I'm a, I'd, 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 I'd have uh, you the, Venmo'd you that money immediately. Exactly. Exactly. Congratulations, buddy. <sighs> Keep yeah. them coming. So, so yeah. Now, you don't have to put much on it to win. And if you do win a big one like that, then if you do you the same bit. thing, it'll last you a little bit. But mine has run out. Right. So, game We're going number fast. one. We're going fast, guys. Yes, so I've make been, sure. I've been instructed to go fast, so I'm going to go fast. Make sure and keep up. This is game number one. Fresno State at New Mexico State. I am taking the Jeff Tedford Bulldogs. Minus 17 and a half. I'm putting seventy-five dollars on it at minus one ten. Fresno fourteen five and one in the last twenty games against the spread. New Mexico State almost mirror five fourteen and one in the same span. New Mexico State is not a good football team. They are atrocious. I don't care if they are at home. Fresno State is the significantly better team. I'm going to take Fresno to cover here minus seventeen and a half. Seventy-five dollars at minus one ten. All right. So I'm going to preface my picks by saying I've got six coming. Yep. Four of them are matchups where I really like both coaches. That's something I don't normally do, by the way. Gotcha. Because when I'm in on a coach, I don't like playing against him. When two of them are playing one another, I don't like playing against them. Yes. I'm going to throw a seventh one in because I just said that. Okay. First one, we're going to one of the biggest games of the weekend, Iowa State Baylor. I'm taking Baylor plus three. I love that rule that I, I don't I, I'm not gonna get too long-winded I love Matt rule I love I, Baylor at I don't home. think that Iowa State has the the but I think these quarterbacks are equal I think, I think so. these coaches are equal I think so and you've got Baylor at home I got Baylor at home and I'm plus three instead of minus three yeah 50 bucks minus 110 I'm, I'm taking Baylor I like it all right next game up for me Wake Forest at Boston College I'm taking Boston College plus seven here. It seems way too easy to take Wake Forest in the points here. The line initially opened at what, three and a half? Yes, sir. And it was moved all the way up to seven. Look, Wake Forest going on the road here, uh, Boston College is still a good offensive football team. Now, the defense has got some problems, right? This is like a mirror image of what Wake Forest is doing, only I like... Wake, I, I like Boston College's weapons better. I, like, I, I know Jamie Newman is a great quarterback, yes, sir. right? But, man, like, give me give me A.J. Dillon and Anthony Brown all day long. A.J. Brown and Anthony Dillon, whatever. Give me Brown and Dillon all day long. 
I love these guys. I think that they are absolutely going to put points on the board. Seven seems like way too many. I got 50 bucks at minus 120 on that one. We are the exact same here. I've got Boston College. I think people are remembering that Kansas beatdown that they took. I, I, I can't explain that. Maybe they were looking for it. Maybe they just weren't ready. I, I don't know what happened there. That is not a trend. I think that was a blip on the radar, and I love one of these situations. I really like both these coaches. I'm in on both. I love Steve Adasio. And I catch a <laughs> touchdown at home. I want that for $100 minus the 120. Ooh, good gracious. All right. I can get down with it. Next game up for me, New Mexico at Liberty. Now, I understand. That means that I have two New Mexico schools in my bets. But I am betting against both of them. <laughs> Liberty minus seven and a half. I think that Hugh Freeze's bunch, now that he has come down, he has ascended down from De the coaches. He's booth. descended. Sorry, he has descended down from the press box. <laughs> from the from the coaches box. And he is now on the sideline. And ever since he did that. He walks the earth like every other man. Only he's not like every other man. I'm telling you, Liberty has turned a corner. This this team could end up six and two after losing their first two games. Remember, Syracuse, not as bad a football team as you would assume after they got blown out by Clemson and Maryland, right? Also, they got hammered by uh, Louisiana Lafayette, or just Louisiana. Look, that's a really good football team. They just went and blew the doors off Ohio at Ohio. Like, Ohio's a good football team. So, Liberty, now that things have evened out a little bit, New Mexico is straight garbage. And Liberty's offense, they are figuring this thing out. What we got going on here? Nothing. I'm, is, looking, okay. up my, I'm looking up my <laughs> stats for the, the bet that I was going to add. I have got 50 bucks on Liberty, minus 7.5 at minus 115. Give me the fight and Hugh Freezes. All right. I'm going to where college game day's going. Oh, Lord. And I don't think college game day should be there. I agree. I've, I've been open. I've been honest about this. I've been public on this. I don't think this is going to be a good game. I don't think this is a good matchup. I think you have one of the best teams in the country in Ohio State that is killing everybody. And I think you have a very average team in Nebraska that is going to get killed by Ohio State. Yeah. I think this could hit 30. I think this is going to be a drumming of biblical proportion. I will lay 17 and a half points all day long. Give me 100 bucks, minus 110, on the Buckeyes. I like it. I like it. Next game up for me. Let's see. Where you want to go? I want to go to Jerry World. Ooh. That's a fun place. Arkansas against Texas A&M. A little old Southwest. A little bit. Arkansas, I think, is completely shot. Is done. I think they are donezo. Is San Jose State good at football or bad at football? They are not good at football. And they went to Arkansas last week? Yeah, and, and beat them 31-24. to They were up 24-7 to at one point. Uh, a lot of that had to do with the fact that Arkansas turned the football over five times. Okay. I think against Texas, a really bad football team. Against right? a really bad football team. Just uh, making sure. I do think. Now I did bet on Arkansas a couple of weeks ago. I told you I think because of Nick Starkle, I think they got it turned around. Well, this is Nick Starkle going up against his old team. You think A and M ain't gonna be fired up for this one? I think A, a and M coming off of a loss. A and M's got to make a statement. Yeah. After that Auburn game. I love the Aggies in this spot. I know it's a lot of points. I get that. But it, minus 23 and a half, don't feel like nothing when you win by four or five touchdowns. I think, I understand that this has been close in recent years, but I'm telling you, Arkansas is straight garbage this they year. They lost to San Jose State in Fayetteville. Yes. That, I mean, that's really all I have to say. I don't have to break this down a whole lot. Texas A&M, minus 23 and a half, 50 bucks at minus 110. I'll let give me, you have this one. Give me the Jimbo Fishers. But I'm telling you, all the points. Just all of them. How many, how many are, are they going to score? All of them. All of them. All, just all of them. Yeah. I, th I think this is a Kellen Mond uh, breakout party. I completely agree with that. God, I can't, I can't say anything anymore. Going to the great state of Maryland. The, the fighting turtles. Absolutely. I, I like turtles. I got a big sea turtle tattoo on my leg. 
Going on a Friday night. Friday night football. Friday I night love, football. You, we love these home teams yes, we in do. midweek. Now, it didn't work out for uh, for uh, Boston College, but they weren't the dog. I'm catching seven points against Penn State. Now, Penn State has scored a lot in their games. Penn State has beaten up on a lot of teams except for Penn, Pitt. Yeah. And they really haven't looked great doing it. It's... It's kind of weird when you actually look at the metrics. You talked about this in our in our breakdown. And I think this Maryland team, A, really good football team. They have looked great every week except one. They went on the road to Philadelphia, and they got beat up by a real tough physical football team. And they really could have won the game. Yes, sir. I mean, that, turnovers, I, that's right. uh, they they could have gotten in at the end of the game, and they didn't. Like, it, there was just a lot going on there. I have a home team catching a touchdown. Against gotta, a team that hasn't looked great. I, I, I think this is all people betting the jerseys. People are all betting the, the, the prestige of the programs. And give me the seven points. Minus 115, a little bit extra juice, 100 bucks. I Oof. I love you just Maryland throwing money game. around like you got it, man. I'm gonna have money. You, I've told you I've got money line already on Maryland. I think I know. Maryland can win this game. All right, so Maryland plus seven minus one fifteen for a hundred dollars. Yes, sir. Ooh, I like it. I like it. All right, I'm going to DFW. That's right. I'm going to Fort Worth. I'm gonna talk about the TCU Horn Frogs. In the Kansas Jayhawks. Are we going to the new team? The new team I added? Man, I wouldn't think so. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Because, it, no, it's all good. I Look, TCU has got problems. Okay, we're good. Obviously, they lose at home to SMU last week. You think, okay, they're going to get this thing turned around. I don't think it's as simple as that. This defense is not the same vaunted defense. This offense still has the turnover bug. There are problems in TCU. And look, if the only thing that you can do well is run the football, what Les but, Miles' bunch can stop that. But you can't hold on to the football. But you can't hold on to the football That's and, you, and you can't throw it. That's a problem. That's a major problem. Kansas, this defense ain't bad. Like they they can run the ball. And they can stop the run. I was worried at first. Now I feel better. Kansas plus 16 is the play. And if you want to be safe, you can buy it up to 17 if you want to. I don't think you're going to need to here. But plus 16, I'm doing 50 bucks at minus 110. I love this. There, there, there's chicanery, right? There, there is chicanery with the line. Are you, uh, are you betting this game? This is the one that I added. Um, this, is, this is the one that I added. Um. Kansas should have covered the, the four and a half left. I, I make it a rule. Now, I will tell you, this this is unprecedented, by the way. I don't think I've ever in my life bet against Gary Patterson. Gary Patterson. I can believe it. I don't know that I've ever done that in my life. Well, but has he ever coached against Les Miles? No. See, no, he there you go. And, it's it's and a different ball is, game. At that this point. is the one time I'm doing and it's just because it's too many points, and your team fumbles too much. When you're careless with the football, you could get got by anybody. And you damn sure can't cover lines. True. And it's too many points. I believe last week I was on the right side of history with Kansas. I lost that bet. It's fine. I pay my debts. But I was right. I absolutely had the right team. And I just got got at the end. I'm doing the exact same bet. 110, 50 bucks, 16 points. Fighting less miles coming in there. And guess what? They're going to win the turnover battle. Yeah. I don't know that it causes them to win the game. I'll have a, a dribble on a the money line. A dribble. Just a dribble. But it's plus 550. That's I don't have bad. to have a lot. It's, it's a hell of a payoff. That's It's not bad at all. Not Five bad at all. Five and a half to one, I'll take it. No, I, I can get down with that. I've, I can get I've down. Never, I feel, you know why I didn't have it originally and I had to add it? I, I kind of feel a little sick right now. I don't like betting against – like, I'll, I'll bet against some of these guys that I like, but, uh, you know. But di- don't don't think about it as betting against not, Gary Patterson. Think about same. it as betting on a number. 
Nah, I don't know how to do that. That's man, I'm yeah, all about that. I know that's what you guys do. That's what pros do. I'm not a pro. I've got a job. I got three jobs. You just you just got to bet on a number. I can't man. do that. I I feel I feel really dirty. So you you are gonna feel anxious while this game is on. What, what time is this game? Uh, so I bet it's, it's a nooner. Game. Oh, it's a it's, nooner. It's, it's 11, 11 a.m. It's gonna get in, Dodge get over. That's, you know what? That's the best thing for me. I'm gonna get it over with. Yeah, I'll feel okay. Well, and there's other games on at eleven, so like you'll. No, be... I'm gonna be watching this. <laughs> I'm gonna just feel dirty for three and a half hours. Go take a shower after. I, I like mean, it. I love Gary Patterson, but I, his team for two years straight they can't hang on to the football. Yeah, you can't hang on to the football. You you can't cover lines. You you might win games. You can't cover lines. You got you got that. Right. It's really hard to win games. You are so right about that. I'll let you keep going. Keep All going. right, next game up for me: Clemson at North Carolina. North Carolina's look good this year. Right? God. No, no. They they look pretty good. Okay. I mean, look, yes, they, they, they lost look. to App State, but they the first two games, you know, it just completely. It, I bet got you another one. one. Look at that. First two games, they looked all right. Like they it came down to the wire against Wake Forest. Pretty good team. It was pretty on the road. Should have gotten that last second. Okay. Last week against App State, they outgained App State. Probably they had chances to win the game. Okay. They got a field goal blocked on the last play. Like okay. all that kind of They're stuff. They're playing Clemson. That's, but they are playing Clemson. It's a thirty point line. It's 27. Okay. I like to round up or down. So. It's, well, that's fine, except for when it comes to that. Like, I, if I'm if I'm getting less than four touchdowns, give me Clemson minus 27 because I, I think – I think I think Clemson minus 30 is just fine. It, it'd probably be fine. I would do – I think we that they are anywhere, going to I, we embarrass. Don't, we don't live anywhere where you can get the alternative lines, but I really wish – Tunica, if I had one request. Actually, no, no, no. You can get alternative happened. blinds like at uh, at Hollywood, I think. The William at, Hill Properties, yeah. too? Yep. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get I alternatives at the Samstown uh, kiosks as oh, well. Oh, the, kio- the kiosks yeah. are going to have them. You yeah, are the kiosks right about that. are awesome. I need, I need to go hit the kiosk. I like alternative lines. Oh, yeah, because you can get massive payouts. Oh, you like, get like plus 280. Yeah. And all you did was just catch three, four extra points. Yeah, I'm in with that. So I'd look it, for. I'd, I, now they don't do them for every game. I'd look for an alternative line in this game. Yeah, I'm gonna look. But for right it now, in the Ohio State game. Right now, I'm doing fifty bucks at minus one ten on Clemson minus twenty seven here. That's a uh, good bet. I I love Clemson in this spot. I don't believe in North Carolina. Um, I, I tell you this: if North Carolina had not won the first two games, I wonder if this line wouldn't be closer to forty. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a it's it's without question a thirty point line then. Yeah. So, yep, Clemson minus 27 at North Carolina. One of those games against South Carolina. Yeah, I know. Who is a garbage football team. Who Who is one of the toughest teams on Clemson's schedule. I'm out. I'm out on you, South Carolina. We're done. <laughs> who you got next? Another situation. P.J. Fleck, my guy. All right. I don't love him as much as I love Jeff Brom. This game is going to be really close to a pick 'em. It's going to be one point, <laughs> half point, one way or another. Give me Jeff Brom. Give me the home team. Uh, Purdue is going to have a game at home once this year where they kick somebody's butt. I think it's going to be this game right here. You think they're beating up on Minnesota? I, I, listen, I didn't think they'd do it against Ohio State. They did it. Didn't, I, there's yeah, been several you did times think they'd when, do it against the Ohio State last year. Well, yeah, I did. But I didn't we, you and I game. both hit money line on. <laughs> oh, we did, yeah, we did, didn't we? That's right. We sure did make that. Yeah. I think it again this week. I think it's right here. <laughs> if, if only the payout was going to be more. Oh, it ain't going like, to be this no, time. No, this is not a money this line. This time you're catching. Well, I guess it is a money line. It's an even bet. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you're, you're matter. catching plus one. It's the line a, I got was plus one. You're, you're seeing even. It wouldn't surprise me if it goes to minus one. They're going to – they're at home. I think – same situation. I think quarterbacks kind of even. If I had to say more talent was maybe overall Minnesota, but I don't know if it's drastically more. I can't figure out why they're not getting the three-point home, home field advantage. I'll tell you this. The best player on the field is going to be Rondell Moore. Correct. So, and and I get him. I mean, it could be like maybe we still don't know what's up with, uh, with Sinalar, maybe. Uh, but even still, like I don't think it necessarily matters. Like I think the the guy that's backing him up is probably just as good. Sindelar right. likes throwing to the other team. Once, once a year, draw, and it's always a Big Ten team. Yeah, they they come in, 
And they they throw it down and they, they put that hammer down. And they get they get left and they get laughed at. Now you right about that. I I'm calling it this week. This is that game. This will be all right. All right. Usually they're a dog when they do that. What it don't matter. This week is an even match game, and they're throwing down fifty points minus one ten. I can get down with it. Had to do it, PJ Flex. Sorry. Next game up for me. The Hawaii Rainbow Warriors are traveling up to the great state of Nevada. And how you said, like, there's been all these people talking about. We used to always say Nevada, but it's Nevada, apparently. You heard? I think we live in Mississippi, and we kind of get away with being able to say it however the hell we want, as long as we're not like mocking somebody. But we definitely ain't mocking. I've always said Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, I'm gonna keep saying that. Sounds good to me. Do you think somebody will have like their feelings hurt if I say it differently? I don't think so. Are they just I mean, this isn't like we're we're not talking about like another country or something. If like, you we're if not you correct somebody anybody. for how they enunciate like the name of your city or state, you're just an asshole. I think you're probably right. Like, um, are you really upset about that? Does that hurt no. your feelings? No, no. I don't mean about talking trash. We love that place. Oh, we definitely do. I mean, that Ooh. is where debauchery lives. It, it, it rules, well, and we love it. Mm. Uh, New Orleans will have something to say about that. The Rainbow sure. Warriors. Go now, they're, they're going to Reno. <laughs> so it's not quite the same. Uh, but Reno is fun. Somebody who says, money came by you love ain't never been to Reno. That's true. That's true. Uh, so the Rainbow Warriors are making the trip, and Hawaii is not great against the spread when they go on the road. Right? They, to the they mainland, leave, they struggle. They, they leave the comforting confines of the the island. And the mainland is, is not kind to them. I think this is a different Hawaii team. I think Nevada, whatever, does not have a fantastic defense. I think this is one of those kind of games that goes back and forth, back and forth. I think that Hawaii, even though they don't have a great defense, I think they have shown enough on defense to show that they can slow down the Wolf Pack. Give me Hawaii plus two and a half for 50 bucks at minus 110. I think the Rainbow Warriors go in there, and it, at least I've got a little bit of a cushion with two and a half uh, because we have all seen when coaches are doing math and whatnot now, it can cost us. <laughs> Thanks a lot, <sighs> Kansas. Not getting that two-pointer last week. No, they tried. They tried. I know they tried. They could have. The problem is, is they played another team that was good at math, and they were starting to go for two. Yeah, that That's, was an issue. That was the issue. The other team was an analytical team. Never would have thought if you took Kansas at plus four and a half that they would lose by four. Like 29-24. Like, that's just an odd score anyway. But anyway, Hawaii plus two and a half. We were on the right side. At the Nevada Wolf Pack, 50 bucks at minus 110. You've got one more pick, right? One more pick. All right. Same story. Went all day. Coach Wilcock, Coach Herm, one of you got to go. Give me Coach Wilcox. I think he's one of the best defensive minds in all of football. Don't like betting against Coach Herm. He's the Pac-12's only hope, only savior for for and raising those season. rankings, staying undefeated, fighting strong. Minus four and a half. Got the weird Vegas zone. Vegas don't know what to do with it. I think they can win by a touchdown. I for think those that haven't caught game. on, he, he's talking about Cal. Oh, did uh, I say that? You, I'm sorry. You, you never said I, Cal or Arizona State. Yeah. It was just Herm it's and Cal Wilcox. at home against <laughs> Arizona State. I do apologize. I should be more clear. That's all good, man. I, it's after 12 o'clock. I love these guys. It is. <laughs> I love these guys. And uh, give me give me Cal. Give me the home team. Minus four and a half. And uh, 50 bucks minus 110. That's my last bet. My last bet is literally the ugliest, nastiest, most disgusting game of the weekend. Akron at the University of Massachusetts. It's gross. But once you start watching, you're not going to be able to take your eyes off of it. I'm telling you. It's like some kind of weird... We just won't even where, get into that. Where, where do we find this game? ESPN Plus. Really? Yeah. ESPN Plus game. Yeah. I believe. I'm going to double check it. Now that you've said that, I didn't mean God, to make you talk longer what, about what did you What did you do so to me? I'm sorry. I just can't believe this it's, game is televised. Yeah, dude, every game is televised. I mean, somebody's like streaming it on. Like, oh, Facebook I'm sorry. Live. I'm sorry. Uh, FLO Sports. It's called it's a cable 2 30 p.m. See how you get that channel. Yeah, I don't know what Flow Sports is. But Flow Sports is also where, um, where you're going to get Fresno State at New Mexico State. 
and James Madison at Elon. And yeah, I think that's about it. I, I'm gonna anyway. go to those schools Facebook pages and somebody is streaming it live. I'd guarantee that. Cell phone video action. I would guarantee that. But yes, Akron at UMass. Look. Turn those phones sideways. They are both disgusting. They're both not good football teams, right? UMass may be the worst team in the country. But if they are ranked number 130, Akron may be number 129. The only difference here is that UMass has been able to put up points regularly in every game. It may not be a lot. And they'll give up a lot. But Akron, whew, Akron has some problems on offense and defense. Okay. Now, both of these, I think, are pretty bad. But when you get two bad teams together, I tend to think that it will be less than a touchdown that separates them. UMass is at home. They are catching seven points. My metrics have got this thing closer to about four and a half, five. I'm going to roll with that. I'm going to take UMass plus seven. Now, this goes against everything that I have ever been taught in my life, which is do not, bad teams. Yeah, do not bet on a bad team to be good. Right? I don't need them to be good. I just need both bad teams to be bad. And if they're both bad, I'm looking at a field goal difference. And I'm good with that. So I could see a 21-17 to 17 game. I could see UMass winning this game outright. Like, I, I could see all kind of different things here. Um but what I what I definitely see is UMass plus seven for fifty bucks at minus one ten. That's what I'm talking about. Home team catching points. What's better than that? We're gonna talk to our buddy TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast right now. All right, we got TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can get it at any podcast location. TJ, we can find on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. How you doing, my friend? Everything going well? I, I'm doing well, and we're only looking forward here. We're not looking back to last <laughs> week because it was an underdog bloodbath. Like, save for Notre Dame in the in the primetime game at Georgia. Uh, yeah, there was not much else to be had on the underdog front. Although Chris Giannini and I both like Kansas. And usually for the rules of what I do, I do this in the middle of the week. And obviously on Thursday, I believe it was four and a half when we were doing the show and the line finished at like five. So the game was a push. But as I always say to the audience, a push is not a win. So we're not going to claim credit for that. Uh, so it was it was rough a week ago. I mean, I was even I, I was even giving you leans on your show last week on the Winning Cures show that I liked BYU, and they they absolutely no-showed against Washington at home and that got was, freight train. That was one of my uh, few winning picks last week. <laughs> yeah, okay, good for you. You should have talked me out of out of that lean. Uh, Giannini had uh, uh, Northwestern against Michigan State oh. on the show last week, yeah. and I liked that with you, and that was a disaster. Um, I think the biggest got, problem was everybody loved that, right? That That is a game where, well, yeah, it was, it was a big, like big all-on-Northwestern thing. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, we 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 had our story. I I was sitting here touting the Big Orange, Tennessee, and uh, Garantano, the quarterback, awful. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt, uh, just as that game went on, almost looked like he was out to lunch and didn't care, uh, which is not voting well for him. No. Uh, Florida wasn't even great in the game and still blew him out. So yeah, we'll just we'll move on from last week's underdog 100%. and move on to this week, please. Uh, that was, I I think that Florida is a better football team with Kyle Trask. Like I I think it makes them more. Uh, I'm not gonna say conservative, but like they dumb down the playbook. I think the like the entire team seems to trust Trask. Man, say that five times fast. Trust Trask. Yeah, they trust, trust him a lot more. In Trask. In yeah. Trask, we trust. Exactly. Well, look, I, I, I mean, uh, you know, Felipe Franks would make you pull your hair out because he would look great for a quarter, and then he would look like he had no clue for, like, the next yeah. quarter. That's right. And Trask had a couple of bad throws, but the opening drive, he was dynamite. Uh, he hit a couple of guys down the field, which they're looking for, and they've got so much speed at the skill positions. Florida's going to be fun to watch, and obviously they're going to beat – Towson's brains in. They're gonna, you know, Towson's going to be like the Everlast bag in a boxing gym in this game <laughs> Saturday, and then Florida plays Auburn next week and really gets into the meat of their schedule. So 
But, uh, you know, the Gators obviously made me look foolish. I, I've gone against them before in the Tennessee rivalry, and my Gator fans here in Florida keep reminding me of that, that I keep going against the Gators in the Tennessee-Florida game, and maybe maybe one decade Tennessee will make me look smart, but it was not this decade. Well, it's just, it, you know, a two-touchdown line in the SEC used to mean something. And right. we're we're just in a different age of football. Separation Tennessee between top football and used to mean Tennessee football <laughs> used to mean something. They just they can't yeah. get out of their own way, guys. And maybe Fulmer has to come out of the ivory tower and coach them again. I don't know. So I, I listened to the Chris Landry podcast, and yes. and he talked on his college podcast today about how Jeremy Pruitt is not the only issue at Tennessee. And I think it is the same kind of across the board because they, we talk every week in our recaps about uh, these dumpster fire programs that I don't think it's just the coaches. I think it's just that that is the environment that the football team is surrounded by, right? So like Tennessee, Arkansas, Florida State, even though they, they started to look a little bit better this week when ha uh, Alex Hornibrook came in, um, the only way to fix that issue is to get the the cancers out of the out of the environment, right? And and the only way to do that is to stop taking their money. So that may never happen. Are, are we seeing the end of of some of these really successful programs, maybe forever? I, yeah, I don't know about it. If in Florida State's case, if it'll be forever. Uh, Tennessee Tennessee has a fundamental problem back to them is in that they don't have fertile ground around them in terms of recruiting. Florida State absolutely does. Uh, Michigan, for example, where Harbaugh continues to underachieve, and I do got to I got to give you guys credit on winning tours here because you were warning me and everybody stay away from Harbaugh as the road dog, and and they got dump trucked last week by Wisconsin. That that's fertile ground though. Michigan and the uh, and the heartland and the upper Midwest they have all kinds of talent and all, and, and he's able to recruit uh, in Florida and elsewhere, Texas, wherever they want. So that's not the issue. Uh, so it's it's different in every case, but de definitely there are some programs that are down uh, that are traditionally up. And I, I have a feeling I, I you know you already kind of touched on it. Florida State plays into my three dog Thursday when we're getting to those coming up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's uh, now it, as far as the recruiting grounds when I. I I used to agree with you as far as the the local in-house talent, but man, this is such a national sport now. I, I wonder how much of that actually matters because you know Tennessee, when everybody else was down, they could go into like they owned Atlanta, they owned Memphis, they right? Owned, you know, I would say they, they owned Memphis, but yeah. but they were able to get guys from basically everywhere, like at Charlotte and and wherever else. Um, they they can't necessarily do that as much now but man if you look at where kids are going to play college football like it's just it is all over the place alabama's roster and i know that's a different circumstance but that's right that's almost completely national it's not just homegrown dudes it's you know louisiana alabama mississippi but, georgia but they've got 15 guys from alabama that can start for anybody and yeah. that that yeah. helps them and florida and florida state and miami should have 15 guys on their roster that can basically start for anybody because there's 150 players in this state, which is why in the state of Florida that you can go and get. Yeah, FIU and FAU. No, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, so it's. I I do wonder about that. I I don't think this is like a talent issue at Tennessee. I think they've got guys. I think they are just completely inept. I don't know. I don't know that they have guys. We we might disagree there. And, well, I, they they don't have a quarterback. Well, they don't have a trigger man. You're right. Yeah, they don't. But they, have, don't yes. they don't have a defense either, though. And that's see. How and strange. they have a first time head coach who's trying to figure it out after they've had the struggles that they've had. And so, is he going to get a third year and a fourth year to figure it out, or are they starting over again? We'll I, find out. I think they're starting over again. I think they're starting over again. But either way, let's uh let's get into some leans man i know uh we want everybody to go and listen to the third or uh, three dog thursday podcast yeah. um but but tell me kind of which way <laughs> you know maybe a few things to be uh to be looking out for all right so you mentioned florida state and, and look uh you know i did not go to florida state i'm not trying to tout them willie taggart's obviously under fire uh for the for the the fact the program is flailing right now and they should not 
at this moment be jumping up and down on that win against Louisville because it was the same pattern that we saw in the previous three games where defensively especially they looked out of gas again. They got the clinching touchdown. You talk about plays. Well, you mentioned Hornybrook. Hornybrook throws the clinching touchdown. There's not a Louisville guy on that side of the field the entire way because Louisville had vacated on the blitz and had just completely busted the coverage. You and I, I could have completed that pass to Giannini for the game winner, I believe. <laughs> no doubt. No, no, I don't know that I could have made Louisville, it down the field, but I'd have been but, open. <laughs> you would have been open, and you would have gotten at least 50 yards, if not the score on that play. I'm confident in you. Run it, run it 50 so yards. I, my point is I don't think Florida State is cured because of that game. Uh, NC State comes in. I know they have lost to West Virginia. Uh, they struggled last week a bit, but this is an ACC game that is winnable for them. They've covered NC State the last three times. They've played Florida State. They covered in the game two years ago when they – uh, when they uh, upset Florida State in Tallahassee. I know that was Jimbo Fisher uh, that year. So, you know, this this is a game that we're going to look heavily at here because I don't think Florida State is cured. I'm not 100% yet taking that game, but we'll look at Knowles Wolfpack on Three Dog Thursday, guys. I like it. I like it. All right, you got any more for us? I mean, we're – Another I, I, one I, is a – was there a more bizarre game in the in the West – then that late night, middle of the night, UCLA, Washington State arena football game that they played in the second half. When you when you comprehend a team is down by 32 points in the third quarter and they come back to win, both teams in the 60s in a regulation game. I, uh, uh, if UCLA and Washington State play in basketball this year, are they both going to be in the 60s? No, not, not, um, not a chance. They'll be in the 50s. It, like that. it was incredible <laughs> – to watch that, I mean, you consider that Stanford played a game at home and scored six points, six, for yeah. Stanford at home, and both of these teams in the 60s in a regulation game. UCLA getting a boatload of points. Chris, what do you have that at, nine or ten at Arizona late night I think on, it, so uh, on it opened, Saturday? It opened eight. I think it's like seven it and a half. Op- it opened at nine at seven and a half. Yeah, it's seven, seven and, and, and a half at the moment. I, I, something says to me the the quarterback – uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson, uh, he found something in the second half. Arizona's defense is not very good. I know they were better last week, uh, but they were not good against Northern Arizona. They were not good against Hawaii. UCLA will be able to hang with them, I believe. That's another game that we're going to strongly look at on Three Dog Thursday, guys. So, uh, let, let me let, tell you what happened. So we're going to we're going to give you. Uh, so remember, I told you about Kansas. Now I believe that Kansas was the right play last week, even though it didn't work out. And, and well, because I, if they hit the two-point conversion, that's a that's cover. right. Yeah. And and so anyway, we we've got some more shenanigans with this game. As of right now, we're talking late Tuesday night. Eighty-one percent of the bets have come in on Arizona, and the line has moved down instead of up. The line should be going up from nine, <laughs> and it is going down from nine. There is right. chicanery here. They are begging you to take Arizona, and uh, I. I you know how I feel when Vegas does this weird stuff with the lines. It doesn't always work, but I would rather be on the side of the house than here's, the other side. Here's what I feel. You're never out of it if you're going against Kevin Sumlin. Because oh, no, defensively no <laughs> or, or coaching adjustments or whatever, he's going to keep you in the game. Remember the epic A&M-UCLA game, different coaching staffs. He coached oh, yeah. at A&M, Jim Moore is at UCLA, but they blew like a four-touchdown lead in the second half at the Rose Bowl that year. He, he just, for whatever reason, is going to keep the other team in the game with style of play, strategy, or whatever. I think that's a strong one I'm looking at, guys, for Three Dog Thursday, UCLA, late Thursday night. Hey, I want to ask you about one game. It's a Thursday nighter, so, I, I, but you, you always talk about uh, the military academies yes. and, and everything. We got Navy coming to Memphis. Now, Navy has given Memphis some fits lately. And you know that I am a Memphis Tiger, and I am scared of this game with Malcolm Perry and Navy. And I know East Carolina's bad, and Navy whacked them with Malcolm Perry getting six combined touchdowns back a week and a half ago (laughs) prior to this Thursday game. (laughs) Memphis at home, but the triple option, I uh, I mean, again, I don't feel as strongly about this one as I did about Army at, at Michigan. But it is scary, at least for the moment, for Memphis until I see otherwise for that Thursday night game at the Liberty Bowl. Navy Navy has covered, like, five straight. 
Like at, dating back to last year, they've covered they, five they've straight just games. They've owned Memphis, and and they've owned Memphis. But I feel like this Memphis defense is significantly better this year. I mean, they're they're literally top seven in yards per play defense. They are top ten in total mm-hmm. defense. Like this is that this is a good Memphis defense. And with a bye week, you know the fact that this line opened at fourteen and was bet down to ten and a half. Mm. I'm I'm a little. And we can't see where the action is on this game. They never give us the Thursday night or Friday night action, uh, infor- uh, the Thursday night action on this. I never know why. Well, look, I mean, I mean, Memphis is favored. They're at home. This is an opportunity with UCF losing last week that you could make the argument they're the group of five team that could make the run and get into the New Year's Six Bowl game. You just hope they're focused on taking care of business. But, again, you don't play against the triple option every week and practice against it every week. Navy does this every week, and it gives teams fit. And let's see if that if that Tiger defense. I hope I'm right, and 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 uh, and Memphis can can put it on them. But it would it concerns me till I see it. I'm like Missouri, the show me state. Show me that they're fine Thursday night against Navy, and then I'll believe it. All right, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so that's going to wrap up our college football talk. As always, go over and catch him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. You can get him on Three Dog Thursday podcast, anywhere you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. cetera. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Go click like. Give him a nice review. Tell him that we sent you, and, uh, and I'm sure that they will appreciate that over there. All right, we appreciate TJ hopping in here. Whew, what a time to be alive. Go and check out his podcast, the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can follow him on Twitter, of course, at Buck Sideline Guy. You can find out more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can also find more information about Tunica, Mississippi. Right there. Right there. Whatever it is. I can't see on the video. Uh, Tunica, Mississippi. Tunica Travel. Tunica Travel.com. I think I, I think I lost my mic. I don't know what happened. It's at tunicatravel.com. We appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Share it out. And, and we do appreciate it. Everybody joining us. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.